Hello students and welcome to the fourth video on ecology. So this one has a lot to do with what we've talked about so far because we've talked about the fact that there are predatory prey relationships where energy is flowing through an ecosystem and we've also talked about other types of relationships that exist between organisms in an ecosystem. All of this leads toward a concept called the competitive exclusion principle and this idea of a niche or a niche. You can say it either way. Okay, so let's start by defining the idea of a niche. So it's an organism's habitat and their role and their tolerance and their limits. And basically it's just where they can live in an ecosystem. Every single organism has, has a specific role in the ecosystem and that role is its niche. So for example, if we're looking at temperature and we're looking at precipitation, there's gonna be a certain area where it's too dry and too cold for frogs and they will die. There'll be another area where there's just the right amount of precipitation and the right amount of temperature to support them, and that would be an area where it's able to live. The niche of a species consists of a bunch of different things. Its role, its tolerance limits, its requirements for shelter, all of those different things also vary through time. In order for an organism to live in a certain area, it has to live in a place where it's supported by the environment. So this goes towards a, um, a principle that's fairly well established in ecology. It's called the competitive exclusion principle. It was first developed or named, I guess, in 1934. And the idea of this is that if two species that exist within the same niche, if they're in the same place at the same time, then one of them will cease to exist because of intense competition. The closer two niches are to each other, the more competition that will exist. And if there's too much overlap, then one of those organisms will cease to exist. This was first developed in Paramecia. Um, Paramecia are single-celled organisms, and they found that these two species of Paramecia, if they were in separate containers that had the same environmental um, aspects to them, both were able to survive just fine. But if they were put into the same container with the same environmental um, aspects to it, then this blue one um, was able to survive and this other one died. That's competitive exclusion. Okay, so I'm going to talk about niches just a little bit as this idea of a shape. Um, so let's say species A was able to exist in this area. Now this area doesn't just mean physical area, it also means environmental tolerance, it means role in ecosystem, etc. So let's say it exists in this you know, two-dimensional idea of a bunch of different things. If there's no overlap, so if two different species fit, fit different roles and have different needs in the ecosystem, then coexistence is possible. Those would be totally separate niches. When they start to overlap is where we get interspecies competition. So inter means between different, so between different species competition. That's going to exist in this philosophical area. Sometimes if there's too much overlap, then different species can evolve um, by natural selection towards specialization. So specialization would be them developing characteristics that allows them to be more different than they would have been if they didn't both exist in that area. There's a really great example of this um, with a type of pine tree. So it was found that there's a bunch of different warblers that all live in a similar area. And these warblers, if only one of them existed, then they could live on this entire pine tree. They could be in all these different areas. However, when all of these different warblers are in the same area, there's too much interspecies competition. So specialization occurs and it occurs within a single tree. So some of these warblers are adapted to live at the very top. Some of these warblers are adapted to live towards the bottom. Some of these warblers are adapted to live on the outside of the tree, some towards the inside of the tree. And when they're all in the same area, they avoid too much competition by specializing into these different parts of the tree. However, if specialization does not occur and there's too much interspecies competition, then the idea of competitive exclusion comes into play, and one of these species is not able to survive in that particular ecosystem. So 
Another thing that can happen is you can have one generalist and one specialist, and sometimes they're able to avoid competition by being very, very direct. Um, this type of a diagram would be um, a challenge for species E because they're a specialist, they're able to live in a smaller area, where species A has this larger niche and is able to fill a lot more roles in the ecosystem. However, if these are still different enough, then both species could exist. So to talk about just one um, kind of quintessential example of what competition and competitive exclusion might look like. The example I want to talk about is with squirrels. Um, so this example comes from Britain, but a similar thing is happening here in the United States as well, especially up in the mountains um, in Colorado. So let's say the red squirrel, which is native to Britain. Um, if we were using Colorado, then we might be talking about the Ebert squirrel, which is the black squirrel native here. But let's say we're talking about this web red squirrel. Um, it has declined in Britain because of competitive exclusion, disease, and disappearance of um, some of its food sources, hazel, copicus, and mature conifer forests in lowland Britain. Instead of that one being able to exist, the red squirrel, competitive exclusion has happened with a, um, an alien. So the gray squirrel is not native to that area in Britain, however it's been introduced from other places. It was only introduced in Britain in about 30 places between 1876 and 1929, but it has grown a lot. So it is a little bit better at competing in that environment, and it has the same niche as that red squirrel. And if we look at the maps, the reason I like this example so much is I think the maps do a really, really great job of showing it. This is where the red squirrel is still able to be. All these dots represent populations, documented populations of the red squirrel, whereas all the dots over here represent documented populations of the gray squirrel. And I think it's just really fascinating how much you can see that wherever the gray squirrel is, the red squirrel isn't, meaning that there's competitive exclusion has made it so this red squirrel is not able to exist in those areas. All right, guys, so I just wanted to talk really quickly about this concept. Hopefully that gave you a little bit of an overview and we'll need to practice it more and apply it to some different ideas.